Building full stack applications with AI is really beneficial for many of us developers and regular users who are trying to implement AI into our workflows. On this channel, we have made multiple types of apps from predictive modeling apps for the stock market to interactive games to even creating UI components that could be used to create your application. As AI evolves with the release of newer models, the output of apps will only keep on getting better and better. And guess what? I have another practical way for you to build full stack applications with the familiar automation platform I've showcased multiple times on this channel, where I used it to automate my data entry processing or even created a WhatsApp chatbot that deployed AI agents to carry out my tasks. This is where I would like to introduce VectorShift, a no-code AI automation platform where you can simply build AI automations, AI agents, assistants, chatbots, and today I will be showcasing how you can build a full-stack AI SaaS app with no code required. The application I will be building with VectorShift is an automated call analysis app where it can practically analyze customer service calls. Now think of it like this, you have a manager who listens to all call queries via calls and this is quite repetitive as the manager has to listen to all the recordings, has to process all the transcripts and process the queries. But with an automated call analysis app, it will autonomously process the files, transcripts as well as responding back to the customer in a human like fashion. And the great part is, is that this is a platform that will enable you to go beyond that. It can analyze the call and then take it to the next point where it can even process it, send it over to the customer as a call or even as a Gmail. And there's so many different things that you can do with the different integrations. Essentially, this is the app that we're going to be creating and it can process various file inputs. Now in this pipeline, you can have it so that the in input could be a text, could be a file or could be even audio. In this case, it's going to be able to even process URL links. So you can then simply just paste in the URL link and then you can submit it and it will up output an analysis of that call. So in this case, if I was to provide a mock call for a healthcare accountant query from a customer, I can then simply just provide it to the AI and the AI will analyze this call and automate that process of showcasing what the customer is talking about. And it can even respond back to them. So what I want you guys to do first is head over to the vectorshift.ai website, which I'll leave a link to, as well as all the other links that I use in today's video in the description below. Once you head over to Vectorshift's website, I want you guys to click on the get started button and I want you guys to create an account with your Google account or with GitHub. You can also use your email address to get started. Once you create your account, you'll be then sent over to the pipeline page. This is basically your main dashboard where you're gonna be able to manage all your automations. You have a marketplace in which you can basically deploy ready-made templates for different automations where you can chat with your Excel files or you can have it so that you can deploy AI assistance for compliance detection or you can have various sorts of different templates that you can deploy for various use cases. You can upload your own knowledge base, you have various automations you can manage as well as various other factors such as analytics to track your automations. Now head back to the pipeline page and what you're going to be doing is clicking on this addition sign. You're going to be creating your pipeline from scratch, but you can see that you can get started with different factors or different categories such as automations, chatbots, or knowledge bases. But you can just create one from scratch and you can see that these are other templates that you can basically access. For example, you can automate your Gmail flow or you can deploy different assistants. In this case, we're going to be creating a pipeline from scratch to build our applications. Once it finishes loading up, you'll be then sent over to this drag and drop UI that we're going to be utilizing to create our app. This is not your generic type of application creation tool. In this case, we're going to be utilizing VectorShift with its no code drag and drop UI to build various components to build this app out. This way, it's going to be more intuitive and it's going to basically have more practical basic components that are way more applicable than what you would basically get generated with some tool like Claude Dev. So what we can do is first getting started with an input node as well as an output node, which is quite foundational for any workflow to be like functional. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. 
So now that we have placed in our input and output node, I simply just change this field name as instruction because this is where you can also have it so that the app can be given instruction to process your file or your URL. So now that we have this input node inputted, we're going to place in a text node and this is where it could process URLs. So in this case, if we're going to be going with that step, you would simply want to utilize a YouTube uh, data loader. And you can simply place in this node and this is where that URL will run the transcript, it will read it, and it will then be processed with the large language model node, which you can place over here. In this case, you can use an OpenAI large language model node with a given system prompt, which would process the URL. Now, this is another pipeline that I'm trying to replicate with speech to text. And this is for obviously uploading your own files or your audio. So if you want to upload mp3 of customer queries you can do so with our app and then this way the open ai whisper model is going to recognize it through a speech to text it's going to trans like i would say transcribe it into text and then have that text processed through the open ai large language model node which can then analyze it and give it back to us and then respond back to the customer so I went along and I gave it a system prompt where I said that you are a language model designed to access phone calls between customer service representatives and patients at a telehealth company. Your task is to evaluate these calls for quality and adherence to customer service guidelines. And obviously you can configure this based off your own, uh, I would say, analysis of your calls. So you can set this to whatever your own preference is. And in this case, I'm going to have it so that it is going to respond in this manner and what we're going to be doing now is having the link to that sample call connected to their data loader our youtube loader and in this case we're going to have it connected to this which we'll uh, specify after we place in a knowledge node and we need to simply create three variables to connect the input node the data loader which is the youtube uh, loader as well as the knowledge base and from here we can then connect it to the output and in this case you can even have this outputted as a text in our app which we have right now but you can even have it so that it could be outputted as an audio it could be also outputted as a file which could be useful in this case where we're analyzing calls for customer uh, queries so now that we have this base structure set out we're going to now place in a knowledge base node the reason why is because we want the open AI large language model node, the AI to respond in a certain particular way. So we're going to give it context so that it can respond in that type of manner. To create your knowledge base, just simply click on this, give it a name. And in this case, we can just name it customer service uh, bot, and then just simply click on create after you change the embedding. Once you have done that, you can upload your own files. You can even add integrations, which is really cool. This is where you can add integrations to Google Drive, Slack, Google Sheets, and so many other options. You can even connect your app over here as well. In this case, you can also have it so that it can scrape websites, which is something that I'm going to be doing and having the AI scrape a particular website, which trains the AI to respond in a particular way for our category, which is telehealth. So now that we have all of our components ready, we have the knowledge base ready, you can now uh, basically connect all of this by specifying the system prompts so in this case to create these what you want to do is click on insert variable and you can give it a name so in this case if we're trying to connect this input node which is instructions you can just simply name it instructions by double clicking on it changing this to instructions and this way you can then connect that to this beginning node but since we already have created this let's just get rid of it because it's gonna clutter this up but now we have an instruction node to connect the input node a knowledge base node which is the context and then the transcript which is the url or in this case we have speech to text as our reader so now that we have all this connected you can then have it outputted and you can change the save or like change the deployed saves and then you can run this pipeline as a test within this dashboard or you can deploy this as a forum which is the best method in my opinion so name it whatever you want let's just name it customer support analysis pipeline create this form in this case, you can name it whatever you want. So we can name it world of AI uh, support line. We can name the uh, change the description to state that please input uh, instruction to process your call transcript or file. And you can also upload it so I can specify upload 
an mp3 file. And now that we have specified that, you can change the logo as well, the styling, as well as the buttons. And once you have done that, just simply click deploy changes, and then you can export this. You can embed it into a website, or you can open this form up as a URL. So you can pass this along to different groups of your teams. You can even add uh, SSO authentication, protect it with the password. And now we have this app fully created. So let's test this out. We actually have an MP3 of a mock call for a healthcare account customer query. And just take a listen to see how it basically sounds. Even. Okay. Let me go ahead and check the claim status for you. So in this case, it's a five minute mock call and we're going to basically upload it to the app that we just created. And in this case, we're going to submit it. We gave it instruction to please process this authentication denial customer query as an mp3 so let's see the results so it looks like i have gotten an output now i had to process that exact same mp3 into the actual dashboard and i was able to get this answer and you can see that i was able to process it now one thing i wanted to show is that you can also have this answer outputted to another integration for example you can add another large language model node which can then summarize this and then respond back to the actual customer through an integration like gmail and you can actually deploy this node connect it to your email and then it can send back a response and in this way your whole funnel is fully automated and it's going to be something that will save you lots of time it will basically improve your productivity and efficiency and this is why VectorShift is the best ai automation platform in my opinion I've made multiple videos on it, so definitely recommend that you watch those videos. But that's basically how you can build a full stack app that you can deploy and embed into other websites. But that's basically it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access different subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. A great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.